guys, it's Cliff here. How you going? You can probably hear the hail pounding on the roof. We've got terrible weather today. It's a polar rodent coming up from Antarctica and snow and hail everywhere. Um, I'm doing a video, well I'm doing production on uh, the impact tolerant touch probe components and um, that's sort of the backdrop to these recent videos. This, this video I'm going to cover micrometers and aesthetics and some uh, workshop production tips and tricks all kind of rolled into one. It's just where I'm at at the moment. Um, I'll get on with it. Cheers. I've been grinding the impact tolerant touch probe arbors in the last couple of days. That's the three quarter inch shank and the uh, TTS flange on the brown and sharp cylindrical grinder. And um, I'm just on the last one now. That's it there with the, with the dog attached. And um, I've been using my Starrett mics and my Mitatoyo mic and my new Shahi mic. And now I've started grinding the other side of the, the other end of the arbors. This is the concentricity adjustment spigot and flange. On the other end of the arbor, there's a spigot with a nut and a special spring washer that pulls that face, that face there, down onto the top of the body of the uh, probe, the touch probe, and that gives you your adjustment pretension. And you can see there one of the adjusting set screws, there's three of them all together, that allows you to set the probe concentric. So that's how it works. There's a, uh, a very accurately ground flat face and a special spring cup washer that's one I had to make to get exactly the right specs in the end and uh, a uh, tensioning nut. So this is quite a quick procedure just to kiss the other end of the arbors and uh, the diameter. So while I'm grinding these arbors, I'm using different micrometers and trying to decide the relative merits of the different design micrometers and it keeps the job interesting. And I've got this new digital Shahi mic and I've got my Starrett mic and my other Starrett flange mic and my uh, Tessa and my Mitutoyo. Where's the Mitutoyo gone? Anyway. What do I think of them? Well, you know, I actually prefer, and I sound like an old-fashioned bugger here, I know, but I prefer a mechanical, simple, graduated micrometer for speed of reading. This, this digital mic is very bulky and slow to use, and um, although it goes to three decimal places, which is microns, thousandths of a millimeter. You can still work really accurately with a imperial or metric conventional mic and I, I actually probably won't use this digital mic very often. What I wish I had done though was bought a digital depth mic because if you've used a conventional depth mic with the graduated thimble it's actually really difficult to read. You've got to really read it when you're taking the depth measurement and it's kind of difficult to calculate the way the numbers go. Um, it just isn't as intuitive 
as a conventional micrometer to read and um, I wish I had bought a digital depth mic and not bothered to buy a digital outside diameter mic or outside mic. I bought my Sparkeroder second hand quite a few years ago now but when I got it I noticed it had a digital Mitutoyo micrometer for setting the depth and I'm seriously thinking about stealing that because a, a digital depth mic really would be a big advantage. They are, I find them really tricky to read an, a conventional depth mic and I've had a few close calls with misreadings and almost ruining jobs. Um, so I think a, a digital depth mic is on my agenda now. Another thing to consider with a micrometer is if you buy a high quality mic like the Swiss made Tessa mic, it has a beautiful friction thimble on it that allows you to have a very accurate control of the torque. Compare that with the Shahi which is actually a really well made accurate mic as far as I can see but the thimble has got a very stiff thimble that would go better with a socket set. Honestly this it's graduated to three decimal places that's microns, it's thousands of a millimeter and yet the ratchet provides about five microns of spring forcing it closed far more stiffly than it should be so you really can't use the ratchet on this mic you don't need that sort of pressure on the thread of a micrometer so most mics the ratchet's actually a little bit steep and, and I find you better just to use very light pressure on the knurl anyway and just you, just in case you think it's me being an old woman about the micrometer ratchet torque here's a beautiful Mitutoyo and it's got a ratchet thimble on this small diameter portion and it's beautiful and light and soft and that's on a small diameter compare that to the Shahi large diameter ratchet thimble and it is much stiffer and bigger in diameter so you would be getting probably four times the torque with the ratchet so uh, that's a bit bizarre isn't it why would you build a high precision micrometer like that capable of measuring microns and yet have a massive over torque on the ratchet and there we are that's the second side almost done I've just got two more to go now and uh, this is a much quicker side unlike the uh, the shank side where I'm grinding to an exact diameter and parallelness this side is all about the surface accuracy and the, and the geometry and that's generated by the grinding process because the grinding wheel is dressed slightly cup shaped and when it's plunged ground into the flange surface and because it's rotated courtesy of between fixed centers you get extreme accuracy and squareness and the uh, spigot diameter is only the bearing diameter that the adjustment screws go on so that's not ultra critical so that's a very quick process now I suppose I've got to grind the outside diameter it doesn't really need to be but it just seems to be convention to grind the uh, Arbor ODs and it just looks a bit nicer so for the sake of a small amount of work I better do that too there we are bowing to convention all bright and shiny oh I nearly said shite and briny whoops it is the complete picture though isn't it when it's finished ground on the OD one thing I wanted to touch on briefly was the subject of aesthetics of, of eye candy if you like you know as a designer or a, you, as a designer you're interested in what is attractive to the human eye and that's a fascinating subject um, I can only really touch on it here but why do we find certain things beautiful and why do we find other things ugly is it evolution is it uh, fractional self-similarity? 
you know, miniature versions of, of the parent article. What is it about it? It's fascinating, you know. Um, we say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Um, or is it in the eye of the beholder's friend? Or Confucius says, said, everything has beauty, but not everyone sees it. It's a fascinating subject. And some people are better at designing good-looking objects than others. I mean, the Italians have got this culture, haven't they? You know, what is it about a Ducati or a Porsche 911 that just emanates sheer eye candiness? I find that really fascinating. Um, it is about proportion. It is about texture. It's a whole lot of kind of mystical properties that we can't quite nail down. Um, I, I remember I used to do des design and engineering work for a company, I better not name them, but um, they used to say form does not follow function. Function has to fit in with form and that's a very interesting debate. You know I always used to think form follows function but a modern designer doesn't usually agree with that. Whoa, it's horrible out there. If you're living in America, enjoy your summer. Well, we all like unwrapping parcels, and it, it occurs to me that the backdrop to recent videos on production machining tips and tricks in my workshop situation is the production of this run of Impact Tolerant Touch Pro parts. We recently unpacked the arbors coming back from heat treatment and um, this is the uh, end caps from Advanced Anodizing in Tokoroa. Shout out to them. So there's my sample from the last production run. Let's see how they've gone with the colour. This is hard anodizing, um, a bunch of them in here, and um, let's see how they go. Pretty good. I, I, I don't understand the anodizing process that well, um, and it doesn't really matter the color if it's exact or not. What matters is that it's true hard anodizing that produces an insulating surface which is needed for the electrical properties of the inside of the end caps and also it's um, hard wearing which is good to have on the end of the probe and um, you know on a lot of cheaper products they look like they're anodized um, but you touch them with a file and they're soft as butter they're just dyed this is true hard anodized well, that's enough clips for one video. Thanks for watching guys. Thanks for following me on this crazy journey. See you later.